Hello and welcome back to the vault. I'm the Gav Major, and today is a Sea Trials. Now, Sea Trials is a look at gameplays uh, while um, commentating on what to do. And what you'll note here is that our division has spawned on the left hand side. My intention is probably to head up towards the centre of Bravo, and Saxman is either going to go for the objective or he's going to go over to the far left. Um, now, what I want to briefly say is this what is, is a bit of a division what gameplay, and we will be switching between the actual. Um, gameplay of the two players in this division now you may hear us in the background my mic is obviously of a higher volume so you will probably pick me out more than saxman uh, however uh, please try to ignore it as much as possible um as as this wasn't really recorded as an intention of being public facing um so therefore i, I i'll confess i'm slightly more relaxed than i normally would be now this is a tier four and five game of domination on haven and on the friendly team, we have Saxman with Guidi in the division with the Major in his London. Then we have an Aguil, a Collingsburg, an Aoba, a Congo, a New York, a Bayern, and a California. So here you're seeing um, Major is now setting a smoke screen. He's got himself into a nice position where he's got a nice wow. opening this across over the objective. So Switching over to Saxman, he's coming to the edge. The highlight of the map is the area of the map that the Major can see. So you can see that Saxman is going to be entering a bit of a blind spot from the Major, so the Major won't be able to assist him as much as possible. Saxman is spotted, and there's a Genevi coming round to the corner. So on the enemy team, we have the Genevi, an Icarus, a Monte Cuccioli, an Omaha, an Oboe, and a division with a Graf a Python Velik, a Bayern, and an Arizona. Saxman gets his torpedoes out and starts to turn away. Now, his engines are knocked out, but thankfully he has the unstoppable ability on his destroy commander, taking out the Genevi, and it's simply a case of dropping off of detectability and avoiding the incoming torpedoes, earning himself a devastating strike and first blood. So for those of you who are interested, down in the description will be the commander builds and the modules used by both players during this game. Switching back over to the Major, he's still in the smoke screen, and as we can see, the enemy grass bay has actually pushed down into the centre. The now, it's not completely correct as yet, but what you'll note is uh, from the position of um, Saxman on the minimap, he's actually keeping the grass bay spotted. So this is one of the advantages of a destroyer and smoke cruiser division um, it's one of the reasons why i say if you're a destroyer stick near, near a smoke cruiser if you're a smoke cruiser stick near a destroyer oh, even yeah. if well, the, here you can see our, our positioning it doesn't look like it's like we're working together but actually because we're so far apart he's able to get a view across because where i am at there's a lot of islands and obviously my smoke screen is uh, covering it off so the grass space on fire and is slowly burning up while Saxman keeps his uh, spotting position on the left flank. Now Saxman is using Eric Bay as his commander, level 16, legendary 3, uh, using the traits Observant Rage, Look at Me Now, Twist and Track, Smoke on the Water and Unstoppable. And modules wise he's using Amos Systems Module 1 and Propulsion Module 2. So the Grouse Bay is basically contesting Bravo, uh, but then again the friendly Agil has also pushed in and used his smoke screen. And we can see that the nearest enemy to Saxman is off to his port quarter. Monte Cuccioli is pushing into the centre. And Saxman gets a couple of torpedo hits on the Bayern. And we should switch around and we should see that the uh, second volley of torpedoes he sent out to the bind also do get a couple of hits. There we go. However, um, he got flooding with the first couple of hits, but he didn't get any other form of flare. flooding with the second volley, unfortunately. Grouse Bay, well, he spotted, so he might as well shoot and get rid of him. Now, we always joked about, uh, that, that we kill Steven off each other, but at the end of the day, removing that DPM as quickly as possible is the most crucial thing to do. Unfortunately, because he's fine, he's now spotted, and he's in a bit of a precarious position because he's got enemies um, on about two sides of him. So he's just got to make sure that he can try and drop off, which he has. But we can see that the enemy, Chris, has also pushed into this objective as well. Yeah. 
Now, the Agim is getting focused because he's spotted and he hasn't got any form of uh, smoke to disengage because he's already used his smoke screen. Um, so the Icarus and uh, the friendly enemies, I guess, or it, <laughs> the friendlies to the enemy Icarus, are um, tearing the Agil apart. So Saxman tries to get himself into a position here where he tries to save the Agil because the Agil's engines are knocked out. But as always, um, what I can tell you is that I, in the or the major in the cruiser, is um, firing on the Icarus. Um, it, it's a known thing with with our division uh, when a enemy destroyer is spotted, uh, for literally everyone to chip in because if I can help kill that destroyer, that means that my yeah, friend the destroyer is going to be in a better position to survive. So I end up burning out the Icarus, but we're both focusing fire, and that kill could have easily gone either way. So here Saxman's going to start doing a quick U-turn, try and get back into the objective. One thing I have to be aware of is that Bayern who's coming round. Now, thankfully, where the Bayern is in his current position, he's actually being spotted by the friendly Agil and Saxman in his guide. Now, it's always worth looking at the mini-map and just noticing that apart from a couple of outliers, now both teams have balled up into the centre of the like, H opposite side of the map. So the enemy kind of balled up to the south of Alpha. And our team have seemed to have forward up to the west of Delta. So here we're just waiting for the Bayern to come round sufficiently around the corner. And then we're just going to sequentially fire those torpedoes. Now, it's a bit risky firing them sequentially because basically either they're all going to hit or they're all going to miss. Depends what that Bayern does and how we wary he is that I'm around this corner. However, I am a smoke cruiser. I have smoked up and I'm not going to be spotted for a good while. Highlighting the map again, that's where the big board of the enemy team of focus. There's an Aoba, and the friendly Agil decides to come borrow my smoke screen, which is a bit risky because if someone tries to fire and smoke and get me, um, then they could possibly get the Agil and finish them off. However, my torpedoes do hit their mark and finish off the Bayern as well. So the Aoba was weak, and you know that's the major's current focus at the moment. Saxman's position here at the moment, he's obviously in front of my smoke screen, and his focus is obviously just to keep getting torpedoes out, but also focusing on spotting. I get the Aoba there, I think I get a Citadel on there, and Saxman now gets rid of the Monte Cucuri. So straight away, we've just killed three ships in very quick succession. Yes, the enemy have actually captured the... Um, Charlie objective, but we've got the Bravo objective, and at the moment their team seem to be trying to contest the Bravo objective, or at least trying to apply some pressure here. Uh, the problem is it just means that they're feeding themselves into this um, meat grinder that we've kind of formed here, and they're already down to three ships. Saxman is temporarily spotted, uh, he's got a little bit too close to the Pyta Velik. But he just managed to just turn away and get behind the island and he fires off a batch of torpedoes at the Pyta Velik on the assumption that he's going to turn um, in towards. Now, uh, you may have heard the Major cussing away a little bit there. Uh, basically, he asked the friendly, friendly Agil to set a smoke screen. The friendly Agil didn't respond with anything uh, and then sets the smoke screen. Um, Major finishes off the uh, Omaha. Not, not too difficult to do when the Omaha is a big floating citadel. But yeah, so... Um, and the Major asked the Agil, can you please set a smoke screen? Agil didn't respond, um, and then I looked the other way, looked back, and the Agil has actually laid a smoke screen without letting me know. So <laughs> it was a little bit irritating, but we got there in the end. So they're down to two enemy battleships, and we're just picking them off as they kind of realise that uh, they made a bit of a dog's dinner of this by um, pushing in the way they have, and now they're in a situation where they're on the back foot. However, this Agil's uh, smoke screen won't have too long to go. Now, but what you'll notice is, even though we're in a division, we are separated by a good amount. And the idea here is, Saxman's going to go for the objective and keep them spotted while I go around the other side of the island and almost get a crossfire on them. Uh, we're waiting for the rest of our team to obviously catch up, but the reason why Saxman is not going for the Charlie objective is because it's quite obvious that a friendly battleship is going to be going into that objective to cap it. So here, Saxman's now getting the spot on the Arizona and the Pytel Velik. 
So this now means that they're spotted, which then gives me a slight advantage with my chain smoking uh, cruiser build. Now my chain smoking cruiser build is obviously used in tie width, level 16, legendary 4, and using the traits subsurface venture, look at me now, torpedo safari, smoke on the water, and smogathon. So the nice one about having uh, this commander, this highly ranked, it means I can pretty much set a smoke screen straight after I have, or setting a previous smoke screen. Really getting punished by the Arizona there. Uh, thankfully the monster here on the London is going to give me a bit of mercy. But you can see on the minimap how Saxman's positioned himself in such a way that he can keep these two battleships spotted for the rest oh, of the game while he gets the cap. So I've noticed that I'm up to four kills and I'm quite close to getting my fifth one. So uh, I asked very nicely of Saxman whether he could uh, spare the kill and let me get the Kraken. And the Pytal Velik burns out. Or should, should burn out. This is where I see like little orange shells. Now the issue is the Arizona is pushing in. So Saxman does get some torpedoes out on the Arizona just so I get my Kraken. So now it's just a situation of um, almost killing the last enemy ship. Our team have managed to capture the Charlie objective and we're halfway through capturing the Alpha objective. So you can see Saxman's torpedoes coming in there and this is where I get my torpedoes out and earn myself the Confederate medal as well. So here you can see we formed a bit of a crossfire of our torpedoes. Mine are coming from the front and Saxman's are coming from the side. Now it's... It's going to be interesting. Uh, mine are on a narrow beach, so that means if he turns, he might be able to dodge me. You can see that the Arizona is turning. However, Saxman does start to get a couple of torpedo hits, and then in come my torpedoes into the crossfire. So, and there we go, kill number six. So now on to the end screen. So here we are at the end screen. Uh, firstly, we have the major score, uh, which is 90,000 damage and 6 kills from 93 hits on target, 3 torpedo hits, 12 fires and 3 citadels, getting himself Confederate, Dreadnought and Kraken Unleashed. Going on to Saxman's score, and we can see that he's managed to get himself 70,000 damage from 27 hits on target, 8 torpedo hits, 1 fire and 5 floodings, getting himself 3 kills, uh, earning himself a first blood and devastating strike. Going on to the end screen, and we can see that Saxman has come in first place with 3,039 XP uh, with his free kills, and uh, the Major has come in in second place with 2,729 uh, XP, getting himself six kills. Now, I think we got lucky that game. Um, I wouldn't say um, our gameplay was probably the best it could be, and also potentially I think we maybe took advantage of the situations that were being presented. Firstly, it's a tier 5 or 4 game, so we are top tier already. So we've got two experienced players playing top tier ships in this match. Uh, secondly, I think we had an opportunity where we kind of took advantage of it. The enemy pushed in in dribs and drabs uh, while our team hung back. So what that meant was we were up front on the front line, so before we were having to deal with situations as they came in, while our friendly seemed to sat quite far back and therefore weren't as involved in the fight. You know, the enemies kind of did a push about midway through that game, where the uh, Monte Cuccioli, the Aoba pushed into the objective, uh, along with the Omaha, and uh, the Bayern doing the flanking position. But I think that moment where between us we killed three ships in quick succession was probably the turning point where our team definitely was going to win and the enemy had obviously passed the point of no return. Um, that was their last big push and I think we kind of took the wind out of their sails from that one. Now, nice one about this one, here, the reason why it's a sea trials is obviously it showcases the... Uh, the benefits of a destroyer and a smoke cruiser combination. Firstly, Saxman's obviously come quite high on the table, not because of the damage or the uh, ship kills that he's done, maybe from the um, capturing of objectives, but the main reason why he's there is because of the amount of spotting damage that he's been able to accrue. Because when a smoke cruiser is smoked up, it can't see anything for itself, whereas a destroyer can spot for him. So in this situation, you see that the Major puts himself in a nice central position uh, where he has the maximum visibility over the enemies and the objective, but also gives himself an acceptable escape route uh, 
the back behind the irons if he needs to. However, Saxman then also positioned himself either off to the flank, looking across into the objective, or actually in the objective in front of the major. But also, there's a nice little bit where they always focus on doing a crossfire. So, if the major's on the right, Saxman's on the left, and that way the, there's kind of like a crossfire uh, in, uh, over the objective. Uh, also, there is a bit of communication behind the scenes. Uh, what you'll notice is when there's a high priority target like the Icarus, or both of them will focus fire and try and get rid of that because obviously keeping Saxman in his destroyer alive is beneficial for the Major in his London. So therefore, killing the Icarus, making sure that Saxman goes unspotted and keeps alive is pretty crucial to this um, team play. However, when later on we're in situations where Saxman's unspotted and he's got the choice between a low health target and a high health target you'll see that he always tar torpedoes the high health target the reason being is for him it's more beneficial to go for the damage on the high health target and whittle that down while keeping the low health target spotted for the, the cruiser to finish it off and um, so that's why the major does get more kills is because obviously he's focusing on the lower health targets uh, just trying to Get that deep using his dpm advantage and his uh, stealth advantage because if saxman gets spotted by firing that could mean that he's going to come into fire and lose a bit of health and we don't want to lose him and at the same time there's no point wasting torpedoes on a low health target um firing all those torpedoes out just to maybe get 5,000 damage is not as beneficial as firing those torpedoes out against a high health target and trying to get a lot more damage out of it. Getting the damage is probably going to be better for him over getting the kills. Well, if you have liked this Sea Trials, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to check out other content on the channel. If you are not a subscriber, feel free to subscribe. And if you are already a subscriber, I'd like to say thank you very much, guys, for your continued support, comments and contributions to the channel. Do you have any of your own game submissions that you'd like to send in? Um, they can be good games for average reports. They can be good games or bad games for sea trials where we showcase some tactical overlays and just try and describe and explain some good tactics or where people could improve. Now, the reason why this is a sea trials is even though we do kill the entire team, um, it's not exactly... A high damage or or an amazing game. I have to confess, between us, we only get one hundred and sixty thousand damage, and you can quite easily do that on your own in a tier six or tier seven battleship. Sometimes. Well, until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port.